it's so hard to believe that the spring days are just around the corner. I am definitely looking forward to all that that entails, but enjoying the last of these cozy winter days in our farmhouse. A big thank you to KiwiCo for sponsoring today's video. More on them in a bit. This morning, I don't have a whole lot of sourdough starter in my jar, but I'm going to empty it down as much as I possibly can while still leaving just a little tiny bit there in the bottom so I can make waffles this morning and then have a nice, fresh, refreshed starter for my baking today. I run a sourdough course and Facebook community where I teach and help a lot of students master sourdough. And the, it's actually called Simple Sourdough because I have seen sourdough be overcomplicated on the internet and it definitely does not have to be. One of the most common mistakes I see people make is not feeding their well-established starters enough. So it really helps to refresh a starter. And as you can see, I'm even emptying more out here into my bowl, just as much as I possibly can, to have a really small amount and then feed that with fresh flour and water. So if you think about your starter as a bunch of little active yeast guys or little people in there that need food, it helps to imagine that however many people you have is how much you have to feed them. If you have a big family, you gotta feed them more. If you have a small family, you don't have to feed them quite as much. So if you reduce your starter down quite a bit and then feed it, it will very much refresh it and make it more bubbly. For my waffles this morning, I added to my starter, I think it was about two-ish, maybe a little bit more than that, cups, a couple of eggs, some melted butter and honey, a little salt, and about a teaspoon of baking soda if it's two cups. I have this exact recipe over on the blog, farmhouseonboon.com. So if you go over there, search sourdough waffles, I have the exact amounts, but it's very forgiving. I kind of just work with what I have available. Of course, you can add cinnamon and vanilla or just keep it really basic. Now that I have my starter way reduced down, I'm feeding it fresh flour and water. It'll be bubbly again in just a few hours for some more sourdough baking projects. It is a lively and active morning in our home, which it always is, but especially in the winter time whenever we can't get outside and also there's school going on. So after a simple breakfast, it's cleanup time. Occasionally I detail this high chair. I should do it more often than I even do. I took out the cover that goes on top of it because I thought that would make it easier to clean because I wouldn't have to constantly take the cover off and put that in the wash, but actually it's even harder because there's a lot of grooves. So if you are newly looking for a high chair, you're in the market for one, think about cleaning it before any other considerations. That's what I wish I had done. Just the most simple, basic high chair because when you have a toddler in there, it gets so messy all the time. And I like to keep it really clean because it can be gross, but that's a constant thing. February may still be winter, but it has a few redeeming things about it. And one is the light is increasing so much, which means our hens are laying again. We have struggled to keep the coop super clean because of it just being muddy and disgusting outside, which means that some of my eggs come in clean and I can keep them in a basket unwashed on the countertop, which is beautiful and I love that. But some of them, I'd say most of them have to be washed. So I'm washing some eggs. We have to clean out the fridge today because I have so many odds and end things. I need to figure out what I can cook 
to use up any leftovers. I really need to start getting in the habit of making like two dozen eggs a day in some form or capacity. <laughs> Shouldn't really be making waffles. Things like puff pancakes or little egg tacos. So we'll take some corn tortillas and put eggs and cheese in those and the kids really like those. Also, my daughter will make puddings pretty regularly whenever we're having a lot of eggs. I also will put egg yolks in my coffee or my morning matcha. So I have both of those things almost every single day. I'll put egg yolks and collagen in them and then we collect a jar full of egg whites. So I'll either make marshmallows or we'll make a meringue topping for a little pudding pie. That's a good way to use up a lot of eggs. We're back in that mode, but we were in the mode of few eggs for so long that I kind of forget how quickly we get overrun with them and we need to be making some egg recipes. The kids love to go play in the snow, but it can be a real big job getting them dressed and they get cold, they come back in. One of the things that we do when we are stuck inside, and this is year round, not just in the winter, is interact with and learn from our monthly KiwiCo crate. KiwiCo is a monthly subscription box that is perfect for all ages. They have a line for everyone and it teaches age appropriate STEAM activities. So science, technology, engineering, art, and math. My six-year-old loves putting together his Kiwi crate, which is the line for ages five through eight. My oldest daughter really enjoys the Tinker Crate that focuses on science and engineering, usually for ages nine to 14. This time she put together some headphones. A lot of the things that they do, they continue to use and enjoy after they've completed it and learned what the crate was designed to teach them. We also really enjoy the Atlas Crate, which teaches geography and culture, usually through a recipe and a craft and several other little things that all go with a country or a location throughout the world. Those are fun. There's the panda crate for the younger ones, the koala. There's something for everyone to learn from and enjoy. Each one comes with several things within it that you can complete without having to go to the store and gather a bunch of supplies. It's all in there. And it comes with books that explain more in depth the concept that is being taught. My kids get so excited about KiwiCo. Every time it comes, they cannot wait to do it. You can try it in your own home by using my link, kiwico.com forward slash farmhouse YT. It'll also be linked in the description box below. Make sure to use code farmhouse and get 50% off your first month. Again, thank you so much to KiwiCo for sponsoring today's video. We are going to start working on a little bit of lunch prep today. I have some leftovers to use up, so I'm going to do a baked potato bar. So in the morning, it's still morning, I can get potatoes in the oven, let them just bake throughout the day, and then whenever it's lunchtime, I can pull out of the refrigerator if we have any cheddar cheese or leftover meat. So in today's case, I know I have some leftover pulled pork in the refrigerator, I have some bacon, and various things that will work as toppings, some Greek yogurt. We'll see what I come up with, but that'll be a really easy thing so I don't have to spend a whole lot of time cooking here in the kitchen. I'm also getting a kefir smoothie going. I make kefir smoothies pretty regularly. Sometimes I'm in a habit of doing it every single day. Sometimes I'm out of the habit for a bit. I will say that I get into a better habit of it in the summertime, but then in the winter, it's not something I always want because it's a cold drink but I do like the benefits of the probiotics. So I'm just doing kefir with frozen strawberries, some honey and protein powder. I like to add to those as well. Speaking of probiotics, I also have water kefir grains currently going. I go in and out with this. Now the milk kefir grains, I've had the same ones for well over a decade. They multiply, so we don't really ever have to buy any new ones. You just add milk to the kefir grains, let it sit out at room temperature until it gets nice and thick and fermented, strain them off, add to new milk, repeat, repeat, such an easy process. Water kefir is delicious, but it takes a few more steps, which means that sometimes that fits in my life, sometimes it doesn't. Currently it does. Again, it's not very difficult at all. It just requires a little bit of extra step because it has two ferments and you need to feed it with sugar water, not just milk. So essentially I do a half of a cup of sugar in water, add that to a half gallon jar with water kefir grains, 
Let that sit out until it's really bubbly. This will depend on temperature. You really can't let it go too long. Like you won't really mess it up is what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of margin for error. Same with the milk kefir. Once it's fermented enough, I add it to some flip top bottles that will seal in all of the bubbles. This is what makes it have that bubbly soda like finished product. So in those jars, I take the strained kefir that has been fermenting that's already nice and bubbly and add it with a little bit of juice, trap all those bubbles down in there, let it ferment a little bit longer. And then that's how we get quote unquote soda, which my kids really enjoy. But it is that extra step. It also takes a little bit longer because of the two ferments. So currently we're really enjoying that, but I go back and forth with it. I haven't had the same water kefir grains for many years. Like I have the milk kefir, which has always been a staple ferment in our home. I also recently picked up some kombucha flavoring teas and herbs from farmhouse teas that you can also use to flavor water kefir. So I'm going to try that. I just had a bunch of little bits of juice in the refrigerator that I wanted to finish off so that I can clean out the refrigerator and start fresh. That's the same thing here with this baked potato bar. There's some things in the fridge that I want to use up. We can pile them on top of a baked potato and get this fridge all cleaned out. You know, baked potato bar isn't something that has been on my radar pretty much at all for the last several years, but recently I had an episode on my Simple Farmhouse Life podcast with my friend Cammie from Tidbits, and she shared this as one of the things that their family makes whenever they don't really have a plan, a meal plan, and it got me thinking about how this is a great way to use up a bunch of things in the refrigerator. I think it'll be in our rotation now. That's one of the things I really love about the internet is seeing how other people do things and being able to implement them in my own home, even something as simple and basic as baked potato bar. I also top ours with some date lady chili sauce. That's good with just about everything. Most of the kids are outside enjoying what is probably going to be our biggest and only large snow day of the year. We're actually really happy to see it because last year we got basically no snow. This is one of those perfect ones because it's barely freezing outside. So it's not so cold to not want to enjoy a lot of the day outside. It's also a sticky snow. So perfect for snowmen and snow forts. They definitely made their share of all of that. This afternoon, I am going to make some of those marshmallows I was telling you about because of all the egg whites that we have left over. So I am whipping the egg whites here in my mixer until they're nice and fluffy. In a separate little saucepan, I have two tablespoons of gelatin and a bit of water, a little bit of sweetener and vanilla and salt. Mix those together, put them in a dish and then in the refrigerator and they make for a really nice addition to a warm cup of coffee. I have been getting quite a few more questions lately about whole grain sourdough instead of using any all-purpose. I personally like to do half and half just because whenever I get all the way into that 100% territory, it doesn't have the same texture, the same taste as regular sourdough bread. However, it is healthier. So I have been experimenting with it more and more to bring that here to you and just for us to use it more in our own home. Now I used to, when I made a whole grain sourdough loaf, add in honey, and oil just to make it softer. But today I am doing 100% whole grain 
and just the usual no need recipe. My basic recipe I fall back on all the time. So I'm doing 475 grams of all whole grain, freshly milled flour, 325 grams of water, 10 grams of salt, and 100 grams of sourdough starter. Now some of the considerations you wanna keep in mind whenever making a whole grain bread is that you need to let it sit with the water before the stretch and folds for longer than you would an all-purpose flour because it takes a while for the bran and the germ and everything that's in the whole grain to soak up the water. And whenever you start doing the stretch and folds, it does take a little bit longer for the gluten to develop and for the dough to be stretchy and glossy and not um, shaggy, but it does come together. So I'm gonna show you how that works throughout the day. I'm also going to get some soup going, perfect for a cozy day in. This one in particular is a chicken corn chowder. I start by browning the chicken in a heavy cast iron Dutch oven. You could really use any pan, but I like to use Dutch ovens because the lid goes on tight and that makes it to where I can let it simmer for several hours without losing a lot of the broth and the liquid. It also makes a nicer sear on the chicken. I will set the chicken aside and then saute potatoes, celery, carrots, garlic, and onion. Add some broth, add some milk, some salt, pepper, and frozen corn, and that will make for a really delicious soup for this cold winter day. You can see my first round of stretch and folds here. The dough wants to break apart pretty easily. I can't pull it up very high, but even with a 100% freshly milled whole grain loaf, it does get quite a bit more springy. Now, after I do the stretch and folds, I always shape it back into a ball and then I top it with a wet tea towel. I do wet tea towels more often than anything. If it's gonna rise overnight and I don't want the dough to dry out because the wetness really helps to keep all of the moisture, I guess it sort of seals off the holes. That's just my theory. But it makes it to where the dough below does not get dried out. So if I'm doing it overnight, I'll do two or three wet tea towels on top of each other so they have no chance of drying out. And that to me is the best solution over foil or plastic wrap or beeswax wraps. I really just prefer tea towels because I have them, they're around, there's no waste involved, and it makes it just really easy. I just get a couple tea towels wet, stack them on top of the dough, it never dries out. Now, if it's during the day, I'll just continue to re-wet the tea towels that are on top of the bowls, but in, if it's overnight, of course, I don't wanna wake up in the middle of the night and get the tea towel wet again. Not saying I haven't done that, because I have woken up, thought about my dough that's rising, and remember that I didn't actually put several tea towels on it, and so I'll just go re-wet it really quick. You don't have to do that, but every once in a while, those are the thoughts I have in the middle of the night. Now I am making a sourdough cornbread that will be really good with the corn chowder. So both the chicken corn chowder and the sourdough cornbread are over on farmhousehomeboon.com. If you want printable versions of these recipes, it's all over there. You can print it out in the recipe card. I'm doing a cup of yellow cornmeal. Actually, that's the recipe. I'm doubling it. So I'm doing two cups of yellow cornmeal, a cup of the recipe calls for all-purpose flour. I'm doing whole grains. This will be a little bit denser, not as fluffy, but very hearty. A cup of sugar. You can also do a sugar substitute. Something like date sugar would work really well. If you want to do honey, it, it'll work, but you usually need to do a, a few extra considerations to make sure that there's not too much liquid, but I have definitely done honey in this. A cup of milk, a half a cup of melted butter. You could also do any other neutral oil like avocado oil or coconut oil. 
a cup of sourdough starter. Now you could let this long ferment. So you could put all those things together, let this sit out for 12 hours and then add in the rest of the ingredients. But I'm doing a quick discard version right now because I don't have time for dinner to do that. Should have gotten this going this morning. So that way I would have a fermented product, which is better for the gut and digestion, but this will work very well too. I mean, all quality ingredients. I add in two teaspoons of baking soda, four teaspoons of baking powder, two eggs, two teaspoons of salt, mix that all together, add it to a prepared baking dish and bake it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. Serve that alongside my chicken corn chowder. Let's finish off this whole grain sourdough bread. It has been sitting out for 24 hours probably at this point. You can't get away with that if you have a house that's any warmer than I would say 72 degrees. You really have to just get the feel for it because you don't want your bread to over ferment. It will be unworkable. It'll be a soupy mess if that happens, but you really will get a feel for what you can do with the temperature and how that changes throughout the seasons. This one is nice and bubbly and I know that it is ready. So I shape it. I'm just shaping it like I do all my other bread doughs, which I fold both ends into each other, roll it up, add that tension against the countertop, let it do a second rise. Now I'm doing this at room temperature today. I'm not doing the fridge rise, so it won't be as beautiful whenever I score it because the blade won't go into it as well whenever it's chilled um, here at room temperature it's just it's kind of harder to get that scoring down but it'll still be pretty it'll still be delicious so i sprinkle it with a bit of flour that's just for the design to stand out you totally don't have to do that i score it i put it in a preheated cast iron dutch oven i'm baking it with the same directions that i do my regular artisan loaf you can find that over on farmasamoon.com. Just search no need. And you can basically just do this with whole grain. If you are brand new to sourdough, I also have a sourdough for beginners recipe over on the blog that will get you more consistent results. This is delicious, smothered in butter and honey, either way and super hearty and healthy. Thank you so much for joining my family on this cozy winter day.